actually started um, late with piano uh, when I was 14 or 15. Um, did piano lessons and um, started playing for different events around my community. And people were like, oh, we want you to play here, we want you to play there. And so they said, well, you know, why don't you do this um, when you get to college, so if you don't have anything to do. I, I really like making my own songs up and like composing and stuff like that. And so I was thinking about doing composition. And the school that I was going to go to, North Greenville University, they didn't have a composition program. But uh, they called me and asked me to come up to audition. And they were like, oh, but we have an excellent music education program that you would really benefit from. And a professor urged me to go into the education route because before this I had been doing uh, piano lessons on the side and it wasn't like serious but it was just something I wanted to do to show you know that I could do it and I wanted to kind of share my gift with the community and so I got into music education and then when I got to the different levels when I got to the elementary level that's when it really hit me it clicked that hey you know I really like this um, setting I like the environment I like the kids here I could do this and yeah, it's, it's just been one wild roller coaster since since then. So. Music has that power to just touch those those areas where maybe math can't touch, or maybe ELA can't touch, or maybe you know sports maybe they can't touch or whatever. But music can touch it. That's one of the amazing things about being a music teacher. You get to share those, and you get to show the kids these different experiences and how to use music positively, you know, how to use it when I'm having a bad day, how to listen to music when it makes me feel when things aren't going my way, I can put on a song or I can sing a song and that kind of helps my day go better. So that's one of my one of my most favorite things about teaching. I was selected by my peers, other teachers, they selected me to be a part of this process. I didn't realize how big of a deal it was until I started looking at those other names and I'm like, oh, okay, I don't see anybody else from South Carolina. I see New York and California. Wow, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty impressive. So um, I just have to thank those people who voted for me or that put in a good word for me or recommended me. Thank you, um, because that was, that was amazing. This award is a great honor, but I mean, it makes you think about other teachers just like you who are also doing amazing and great things. Um, not only just music teachers, but all teachers that are doing great things. We support each other a lot. Uh, in the district, we have, um, in the elementary section alone, I'm blessed to have amazing elementary music ed teachers that when we have our meetings, we come together and we share different ideas, we network, we support each other, we share resources, um, I mean, in abundance. Uh, and when I got here, they were very, very supportive of me. And just watching their teaching styles, that really helped me to kind of fine tune my teaching style. And also the teachers here at this school. Uh, when I first got here, there, there weren't too many um, males. And then as I got here, more and more males started to appear. And seeing males being represented, seeing um, you know just other teachers that came in during my time that are still here, that helps me to know, hey, you know what? We're here, we've been here for the, we're gonna be here for the long haul. And we can support each other, not only outside of what we do musically, we can support each other as a teacher. The best day is probably when I leave thinking, I got through to somebody. You know, maybe my lessons didn't land or didn't stick. You know, I always like to use the analogy about, you know, we're the cooks, you know, the teachers. We prepare this, this lovely meal. I mean, we got our garnishes on it. I mean, we got, we got our onions and whatever we got. We got all our different spices. Oh, they're going to love this. It's your job to make sure they try to get what's off that plate, you know, as much as you can. You know, they may not eat the whole thing or the whole steak or the whole whatever, but it's your job to give them what, what you have to give them because they need to know that information. They don't know that they need to know that, but by you presenting it in a way that they can understand, they not only will enjoy the meal, but they'll go, oh man, you know, are you, are you going to have some more of that next week? I, I kind of like that. Sometimes the plate will move and the food falls on the floor, and, but that's okay though, because as long as they are able to get a little bit off that plate, you don't have to get, get them to eat the whole thing, but just a little bit, and we can, tomorrow we can get some more. So a, a, a perfect day would be when at least things off that plate has been eaten by, by my, at least a few things, where they can come back to me. I know this because they can come back to me on another day and say, hey, Ms. Perkins, you know, I remember when you did this. That's, that's something that I thought fell on the floor. Hey, Ms. Perkins, are we going to do this again? That was fun. Can we do that? 
Those are the moments that make me go, wow, you know, I'm, I, it didn't fall on deaf ears. What I'm doing is not something that people are ignoring or children are ignoring. They are really, they are really enjoying this. They are really, it's really, it's really doing something for them. They're adding this to their life. So that, those are the, that's a bit, that's the best day for me.